Hallo, 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 um, as you should already know, my name is Jeff Anderson, uh, perhaps the last and solitary voice of unmutated humanity, uh, currently broadcasting over the emergency broadcast network, I'm appealing yet again for, uh, for well, basically any sort of company, really, at this point. Uh, I've, I'm not really choosy now, to be honest. Um, intelligent life or otherwise, anything, anything will do. Just uh, my location is here, here in the basement of a little supermarket in South Shields, as you should already know. Hopefully, you've heard, and uh, I just maybe feeling a little bit shy, a little bit reluctant about coming to say hello to us. Uh, hopefully. That's all there is to it, and I'm not the only surviving man within a radius of God knows how many miles. You, you, likewise, you might be feeling a little bit down from the nuclear apocalypse that happened over a year ago, like myself. I, I understand that. I understand that. We've, had, we've all had a lot to come to terms with, I think. Um, I know I have. And this is, of course, all compounded by the heartbreak and loneliness that comes from still being alive when millions of other people aren't, and yet not having any sort of proper stimulation, the sort of stimulation you might expect if you had like a DVD player or something like that. So, here's hoping somebody out there hears my third appeal um, lighting the beacons, as it were, raising my head above the parapet. Uh, a little shout out, a little shout out to anybody surviving there, um, out there, perhaps in a bunker, or, you know, in a police station, somewhere like a fire station, something like that, you know, some of these buildings were, were, were quite, uh, especially the old-fashioned ones, were quite sturdy. It was all to do with the bricks. Uh, none of these sort of jerry-built houses that all went up in flames uh, so quickly, I'm presuming. Because, uh, as you know, I didn't see it. I was on the toilet when it all went off. But, uh, but I can imagine. I can imagine a lot of these, uh, a lot of these modern, like wimpy homes and stuff, just went up like uh, cotton wool, and the the poor inhabitants burned alive instantaneously. Turned to, turned to ash. Anyway, anyway, so uh, here we are again, ladies and gentlemen. I'm sure, I'm sure there must be somebody out there, somebody out there listening. Um, like I say, don't be shy, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, come to Little's, uh, you know, so there might be a little bit something in it for you, if you like, you know. Uh, there's, there's, there's numerous things here I'm not so keen on. And I've got plenty of stuff, so um, that would be gratis, free, free gratis to you just for turning up. It's going to be worth your while, you know, you know. So you don't have to stay along, just say hello, you know. Uh, we, we can maybe have one of them little cartons of apple juice, you know, with a straw in, something like that, you know. I'll 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 put some outside, outside of the shutters, and uh, and we can have maybe five ten minutes, you know, catch up, see how things have been with you, and I can tell you what things have been like in here, in the dark, in, in the gloom. Uh, it's mostly gloomy, it's dark of a night time, here in the basement of the Littles. Uh, as as for myself, just to, just to give you all a little bit of an update, I, I do admit I'm feeling a little ambivalent uh, today. Uh, I had a bit of a rough night last night. Uh, as you know, the, uh, the roving bands of mutants uh, sometimes come and bang on the shutters and swear and shout obscenities and threats. I mean, I'm no prude, you know, and uh, you know, I'm not one to blanch at, at, you know, 
of the old Anglo-Saxon. What I can make out is very inventive. I've got to say that. But um, I'm a little bit disappointed, ladies and gentlemen. I am. Um, I, I, I try to overcome my own inherent prejudice against, uh, you know, cannibals and uh, you know, and people with big goggly eyes and and oh, you, you know, and all that sort of thing. You know, uh, three arms and stuff. I, you know, I've, I've, I've tried to rise above that and, you know, and put aside my fears. I realise, you know, it's on me. It's on me to put that aside. And uh, and I've tried to reach out to the mutant community out there and, uh, and try and improve relations with them. Uh, they, they, were, they were banging on the shutters there uh, last night, early on. And uh, so what I did, what I did was I got a pen and paper it was actually some some very nice very good quality uh head and old paper that that they had at littles that my friend brian wallace who used to be the the manager here and like most people now is dead presumably dead uh it was a very nice note paper and i very carefully and very respectfully crossed out brian wallace's name and put my own jeff anderson on top as neatly as i could you know, but it's the same address. It's just that he's dead and I'm, I'm not. With this, with this nice headed note paper, as I, I wrote the friendliest note I could come up with, explaining my point of view, living in here, what with, what with, what must be hundreds of tons of food and and essentials, um, you know, and them out there wanting to, wanting to eat me flesh for starters. Uh, I wrote I wrote the nicest letter I could, uh, chose my words very, very carefully, wanted to improve relations. I slid that under the door, uh, I, I put the pen through as well, and uh, and I waited. Five minutes later, uh, I get the slip of paper come back w with <sighs> the most insane daubens I've ever seen in my life. Uh, the, 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 they've obviously lost all sense of literacy due to the due to the radiation or whatever. But but it also included the most detailed and offensive picture of a man's uh, of, of 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 a phallus, I suppose. I suppose you could describe it. Uh, and uh, and and perhaps the worst. The worst sort of threat you can imagine. So I'm very disappointed, ladies and gentlemen. As I, say, I did try my best, I tried to reach out to these people, but uh, but what I got back was obscenity, absolute obscenity. And to make matters worse, I I didn't get my pen back. I heard crunching noises, and I can only presume that these idiots, because that's what they are. I'm. I don't care. I don't care who knows that these people are idiots. What sort of what sort of response is that to this filthy picture as of a man's what's it? Enormous. I mean it was it was the full size of the paper. Lurid. What sort of response is that to come back through and to eat a man's pen? I try and show these people kindness and this is what I get back. I tell you, my faith in subhumanity is shaken to its core, ladies and gentlemen. I don't mind admitting. But, as ever, as ever, ladies and gentlemen, it is our duty as survivors to try and keep our own spirits raised. To not sink into the mire of depression and, uh, and soul-destroying loneliness. On a, on a slightly lighter note, trying to, trying to maybe reconnect with reconnect with happier times, I'd like to start what I hope will become uh, a regular feature of me of, of me little broadcasts. Uh, it's a, a little feature that I like to call Memories of Margaret, as uh, I just like to reminisce a little bit about the presumably dead wife Margaret. There was happy times between me and Margaret. There was. And, uh, I don't know if I mentioned before. I don't think I have. But uh, but Margaret was officially disabled. She uh, she was uh, in a wheelchair. Margaret, 
most of the time. Um, she was she was technically paraplegic, which which meant uh, she, she, like her legs were useless. They were about as much use as Russell Hartley's fluffy slippers. I loved her. I loved her. I did. And uh, and she she, uh, she 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 was the same. But uh, I remember, you know, ladies and gentlemen, when uh, when she was first properly diagnosed by the specialist, he uh, he sat me down in another room, and he very carefully explained to me how this was all my fault. I remember his words distinctly. He, he said, "Now, Mr. Anderson, I want you to understand that the that the reason your wife's legs have stopped working." Is uh, it, it's a psychosomatic uh, reaction to her being overwhelmed and uh, and regularly marinated in annoyance, whatever that meant. Those were the doctor's exact words to me, verbatim. Verbatim. That's what they call it. Verbatim. Word for word. He he, he explained that it's it's a, it's some sort of. Some sort of rare form of, of hysteria, you see. But we were we were we were sort of happy enough, and uh, due to having no feeling whatsoever below the the navel, due to this uh, this hysteria, um, I, I would push her around in that chair where, wherever she wanted to go, you know. Uh, however, you know she she did. Uh, we did. We tried to keep her as active as possible. Uh, every Wednesday, I would wheel her down to disabled Zumba classes. Um, Dumba, as it was advertised at the community centre. Uh, the as the doctor said, he said, "I think it's doing the the world of good." He said. But uh, truth to tell, I, I I don't know if I could see it myself. I mean, it, you know, this lively music going on, but. But I'd be the one pushing her this way and then pushing her the other way to the beat. You know, and then I'd have to run round the front of the chair and uh, and lift her legs up for her, you know. So lift and kick and lift and kick, then the other one. Lift and kick and lift and kick. I lost two and a half stone, but, uh, you know, all, all the while she'd just sit there in the chair glaring at us, eating one one toffee after another you know and uh, so she brought on a little bit of weight to be honest you know which which was a shame because because prior to this uh, hysterical quadrophenia you know Margaret had a lovely set of pins she did she did and uh, she, she was she were losing that a little bit you know but uh, <laughs> A little, little happy memory, though. It's, uh, you know, maybe, maybe two or sometimes three times a year. You know, she would, she'd, she'd, if she were agreeable, she'd, uh, she'd let me, she'd let me uh, put some of her favourite, uh, well, my favourite. Uh, I used to love to see her in the uh, fishnet stockings on her, on her, on her uh, useless legs. Oh, and uh, you, you know, in the in the bedroom, it's uh, it's very good, very good that. But, uh, you know, <sighs> sort of tinged with sadness at the same time. You know, could put you off a little bit. But uh, but, but happy memories nonetheless. Happy memories. So uh, there we have it. I hope that becomes a. a a little bit of a regular feature. You see, you've, we've got to try and cling to, to a little bit of structure in our lives, don't we? You know, in this in this uh, radioactive hell that we that we inhabit nowadays. Um, I, I, just and it's so important. I keep stressing this. It's so important to, to try and keep your morale up. I find. With that in mind, some a little something I've. I've started to do, as I've 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 tried to invent some little games, you know, you know, try and try and keep my spirits up, uh, just just like a little bit of fun, a little bit of exercise, 
So chill. The me me favourite one, my favourite one at the minute is uh, it's called the Hungry Caterpillar, and it's it's hours of fun. It is. I, I, I basically get myself inside of a sleeping bag. I, I I zip it up as far as I can, and and just roll around the floor eating lettuce. Sometimes I laugh because there's a load of frozen lettuce there in the back, and uh, I, I, I'm not really very keen on it to be honest. It's iceberg, you know. It's got no flavour. So so I thought rather than you know rather than torment myself trying to eat in that, I'll just uh, I'll just chew on it and play the play the hungry caterpillar instead, you know. And say so, uh, there's a, another little thing uh, I've I've done to while away the long hours is. Uh, uh, in one of the bins, I found a, I found like a kid's bat and ball game. You know, you know, you you can't really get much simpler than that, can you? You know, but uh, but it, it, it the ball had, was missing. You know, but uh, so as a, I, I tried it just with the bat at first, but it wasn't much fun at all. Um, and then the idea come to us, you know, uh, get a bit of string and a needle and uh, and a frozen sprout. I stuck a frozen sprout on the end, you know, and, you know, I, I, I really don't know where I'd be without things like this. Another another little game I've I've developed to uh, try and keep my spirits up. Uh, one that I, I, I play of a night time, specifically. As, uh, as I mentioned, it does get really, really dark. As... Uh, as a little game I, I call Touchy Feely, Touchy Feely, and uh, it's it's, a, it's basically like a like a lonely man's blind man buff for one player. Um, I I just go around in the dark touching things, you know, and and oh, oh, what's this I found? Admittedly, most of the time it is tins, you know, mostly, but uh, you know, uh, sometimes there's other things. You know, I found the Hoover last week. That was that was great because I, as I couldn't remember, I couldn't remember what it was. I, n- number number four on my little list of games is uh, a little card game I like to play during the day when it's when when I'm just here in the gloom, uh, in the, in the uh, in the office when the office draws. Uh, they've been invaluable. I've, I've, I found a, I found a game. Of, I found a deck of cards. You know. Um, fortunately, I never learned to play poker or or any of the like more popular card games myself. You know. But so I was sort of forced to to come up with my own. And uh, really, my favourite one is uh, is one called Guess the Card. And uh, it's just I get the cards and uh, I try and guess them. Seven of Hearts. No, it, it it mostly is nose. It's uh, sometimes sometimes once a day, I think. Yeah, sometimes once a day I get one right, you know, and uh, and he, 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 I laugh. Have a have a right all after myself. It's it's uh, it's good, you know. It's good. But uh, but it's not all fun and games, you know. Here uh, alone in the gloom and the dark. In uh, in the the basement warehouse of of Liddles here in South Shields, it's not. It's not. I do admit, and I have mentioned uh, I have been a little bit ambivalent this week. Things. What with what with the carry on with the with the mutant seat in me pen, and uh, and putting through that filthy picture of a of a as of a man's phallus, you know, in reply. I've never been a, a you know a fan of modern art at the best of times, you know, but uh, but uh, but things have been have been getting us down a little bit. I, I do admit, I do admit, because uh, I suffered quite a cruel blow this week, as as I've been mentioning on me on me uh, last two broadcasts. Um, the little ray of light that keeps me going, you know. M- I wake up in the morning and and I think about suicide quite often, but then I picture inside of my mind the day when I finally get my hands on a DVD player, you know, and I can I can start watching any of the over 400 titles 
that that are in the bargain bins here you know um anyway i i, I don't know why i hadn't thought of it first but uh, i had looked in the security cupboard uh, here in the basement and uh, they glittering shining in the dark just glinting that's the word glinting in the dark was there uh, with this metal machine and, uh, and my me, me heart nearly stopped anyway I rushed out and I, 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 I took it out into the gloom where I could see a little bit better and it was a VHS tape recorder that they used for the uh, for the security tapes uh, I mean uh, who has VHS you know nowadays or you know even before the apocalypse you know um, you know and try as I might there is no way you can get a DVD to work on a VHS video recorder so like, there was a couple of days worth of uh, of security footage on the on the VHS VHS tape um, but, you know it, it, it was it was mostly it was mostly just footage of nothing taken on a night time when the store were open. Yeah, uh, not very entertaining and doesn't do much for your spirits. It just reminded me how desperately, desperately alone I am. So, with that in mind, um, I, I have I have mentioned before I, I am able at least. To, uh, I might not be able to watch the DVDs that are here, but uh, but I can read the the write ups that they have on the back of the covers, you know, and try and try and picture things, try and picture the film in me, in me mind. Yeah. Um, so I thought I, th I thought I'd maybe uh, again, hopefully, make this a little regular feature of me of me broadcasts. Uh, I'd like to review just a couple of them. Uh, now and uh, and we can share that, you know. I mean, uh, you know, you're probably in the same boat as me. If you're not, if you're not in the same boat and you have got a DVD recorder, then please, please, please get in touch as quickly as possible. But uh, but here we are. I'm not going to let it get me down. So uh, you, we'll we'll share the cover of a of one of the DVDs from the bargain bin. Uh, this one here it's called. Uh, oh, hang on. All aboard the Cleveland steamer. Uh, the makers and producers of Seamen on the Deck and Man the Pumps bring you more tongue-in-cheek hijinks in this historical romp with a twist. Quick-talking riverboard gambler and poker race Thaddeus Clamp, played by Vane Tempest, teams up with a cabin boy by the name of Dusky Spade, deftly brought to light by Hollywood newcomer Kimbo Slice. TV's Simon Callow leads this all-star, all-male cast of actors as arch-villain and dashing cad Schnitzel von Berger as they all come together to pull off the biggest heist in pre-abolitionist America. I, I, I really would like to have seen that one. Maybe one day, hey, ladies and gentlemen, maybe, maybe one day. Yes, yeah, I, 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 can, I can, I can just imagine the hijinks now, you know, the, the cheeky one-liners and all the rest, and uh, as, as, the, as the battle prejudice and uh, and discrimination against uh, darkies. Uh, anyway, uh, there's another one here as well. It's, uh, see, it's uh, Seven Brides for Two Brothers. Uh, which appears to be uh, some sort of foreign language film. It's Arabic, by the look of it. Uh, it's, it tells the steamy story of kidnap, housework, and finally love in downtown Beirut. Starring Al... 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 I'll try. I'll nah. I'll nah. I'm and uh, and others and others. 
I'd say I've 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 never really been one for foreign films and that, but uh, but I'd be I'd be more than happy to give that one a go tonight. I tell you, uh, it's, a, it's a, you know a little bit a little bit of culture, a little bit of culture, lovely. But uh, but I shall have to wait. I shall have to wait. I wait and keep on hoping. Keep on hoping that one day my DVD player will come. Perhaps brought to me by uh, by a nice lady, perhaps you, you know, or uh, something like that. You know. Also, as you might remember, uh, if, if you no doubt listening to me uh, to me previous broadcast, um, I'm very blessed here with uh, with with having a, a huge selection of the uh, of uh, romantic novels that that were on sale at, at Littles. Uh, from what must be no doubt the the number one number one publisher of of romantic fiction here in the northeast at least uh, wills and probate books and uh, uh, again I haven't really been able to concentrate well enough on things to to actually sit down and read one fully in the gloom you know but uh, but I will but I will I'll get around to it um, and this, I thought just share a few of these with you you know whet your appetite if anybody out there if anybody out there is uh, you know w- would would like to trade a romantic book you know for for something else you know that that, that would be more than welcome just turn up just turn up and be friendly that's uh, that, that's that's pretty much pretty much all I ask um yeah they look really quite good uh, there's one here there's one here called uh, called the wind beneath my bingo wings uh, as I suppose even even council estates can be sexy, can't they? You know. Uh, oh. Yeah. Uh, the the, uh, the the second one here looks rather good as well. It's uh, it's called beer goggles. Uh, it looks quite light-hearted. It says that uh, passions flare between a sexy female nightclub bouncer and a homeless. That's uh. Hmm. I look, I look forward to getting round to that one as well. Touching Cloth. A seductive tale of a burning romance that develops between an 18th century vicar and a 19th century postmistress. Excellent stuff. Lots and lots and lots there to, to, to keep me occupied. You know, actually, I... Uh, when I first met Margaret, she was working in the post office. It uh, does take me back. She, uh, I was a regular in there, you know, and uh, every now and again she'd give me a free stamp. You know, she said, you can stick that. <laughs> and sort of tip, tipped us off, you know, and it become a little bit of a thing, actually. And uh, eventually I, I plucked up the courage to, to ask her out. And uh, what I did was, uh, was uh, I got a magnifying glass and with as carefully as I could, I wrote a little love poem on the on the back of a se- on the back of a first class stamp. Uh, so I went to post a letter, and uh, I still remember it actually. It was uh, Margaret, I love you like tramps love cider. If you were a horse, I'd be your rider. If you were a flower, and then I ran out of space, you know, because there's only so much you can get on the back of a stamp, you know. But uh, anyway, I, I handed it to her, and she licked it, you know. Uh, and that was that, really. That was well, that. That's that's how that's how me and Margaret started courting. We were happy days. Things things were different then, you know. For starters, she could walk, you know. Things did go downhill from there, admittedly, probably quite quickly. But, uh, but for a very brief window, you know, we were happy. You know. 
No, I've uh, I haven't had a very good week. All things, all things considered, this week I I, I do apologise, ladies and gentlemen, if I'm not doing my usual job of of uh, putting out the bulldog spirit and uh, you know helping we all helping us all keep our chins up and that. Uh, I'm a, I'm a little bit ambivalent this week. I am the uh, more than more than anything. I think the I think the the carry on with the mutants. It, it, you know, it was just, it was all so unnecessary, isn't it? You know, and uh, so the threats, horrible, horrible threats. They said, we're going to come in there and we're going to skin you and wear you as a bum bag. I mean, is there any need? But never mind, never mind, ladies and gentlemen, I shall, I shall soldier on here, on my own, in the gloom and the dark. With uh, with everything else that I could possibly want or dream of, apart from a DVD player. But, uh, no, it's uh, it's been quite a week, ladies and gentlemen. And after that tin of, of pickled trout that I managed to to get down with the other day. Uh, I really do envy the dead. Here's till next time, ladies and gentlemen, and I hope you're well out there in the blistering hot radioactive wasteland that we call home. Thank you, Jeff Anderson, Little's Basement, South Shield. Thank you. What's that? I'll, I'll cry, I'll nah, I'll nah, my run.